War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman reporting from the winter wonderland of New York. After nearly seven hours of televised debate, President Obama's so-called bipartisan health care summit ended Thursday without any substantive agreement between Republicans and Democrats. Republican lawmakers remain staunchly opposed to using the federal government to regulate health insurance. Following the summit, Illinois Democratic Senator Dick Durbin told reporters, quote, if nothing comes of this, we're going to press forward. We just can't quit. This is a once-in-a-political-lifetime opportunity to deal with a health care system that is really unsustainable. Well, earlier in the day, Republican lawmakers had urged the president to drop his health care proposal in Congress and start afresh. This is Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee. Our country is too big, too complicated, too decentralized for Washington, a few of us here, just to write a few rules about remaking 17 percent of the economy all at once. That sort of thinking works in a classroom, but it doesn't work very well in our big, complicated country. At the end of the session, President Obama acknowledged that the divide between the two parties on this issue might just be too large to bridge, but sent a clear message that Democrats will move forward to pass major legislation with or without Republican support. What I'd like to propose uh, is that uh, I've put on the table now some things that I didn't come in here saying I supported, but that I was willing to work with potential Republicans. Uh, Republican uh, sponsors on. I'd like the Republicans to do a little soul searching and find out are there some things that you'd be willing to embrace that get to this core problem of 30 million people without health insurance and uh, dealing seriously with the pre existing condition issue. Um, I don't know, frankly, whether we can close that gap. And if we can't close that gap, then I suspect Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi and John Boehner are going to have a lot of arguments about procedures in Congress about moving forward. Uh, I will tell you this, that uh, when I talk to uh, the, the parents of, of children who don't have health care uh, because they've got diabetes or they've got some chronic heart disease, uh, when I talk to small business people who are laying people off because uh, they just got their insurance premium, uh, they don't want us to wait. They can't afford another five decades. Outside the Blair House summit, across from conservative protesters calling kill the bill, single-payer advocates held a grassroots sidewalk summit for Medicare for All. Physicians for National Health Program was one of the organizers of the sidewalk summit. Despite repeated requests, the group was not invited to the official summit. We're joined in Baltimore now uh, by the Congressional Fellow for Physicians for National Health Program, pediatrician Dr. Margaret Flowers. And for more on what happened during the seven-hour summit and what comes next, we're joined via Democracy Now! video stream by Trudy Lieberman. She's a contributing editor to the Columbia Journalism Review, and she blogs on healthcare at CJR.org. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Trudy Lieberman, let's begin with you. Even though you are very close to Democracy Now! studios, just to let people know the weather report around the country, um, we have had more than a foot of snow in New York. It is truly uh, astonishing to walk through the streets. The streets are just blanketed in snow. So thank you, though, for joining us from your home by Democracy Now! video stream. Trudy, tell us what was new in yesterday's seven-day, uh, seven-hour session, if there was anything. Well, I heard one thing that was new. Uh, they had a lot of back and forth about the minimum benefit package for insurance policies that would be sold through the insurance exchange. And the insurance exchange is the brokerage service, uh, shopping service, if you will, that the government is planning to set up to help people buy insurance. These are people who don't have insurance from employers uh, and small businesses. Um, I believe. Um, one of the Republicans said that he thought maybe one thing could happen is that the uh, insurance companies that did not have policies that met these minimum benefit standards could sell their policies alongside those that did, and those that did meet 
benefit standards would have a check or some kind of designation to show that they met some sort of uh, standard that the government had set. That was the first time I had ever heard that being uh, discussed, and whether or not that will survive in the final bill is um, an unknown question. But for me, that was new. I think the takeaway for me from all of this, and I listened to almost all of it except for the early morning part, was that as a country, we are still extremely divided. And this has been a problem that we have had from the very beginning uh, when this country was founded. We have a deep cleavage in this country about how much government should do and how much government should not do. And for me, that came through in many, many ways. Uh, certainly, it came through in the whole discussion of how much we ought to be regulating insurance companies. Regulation is something that has always been with us. Sometimes we regulate more, sometimes we regulate less. But it's always a very contentious, tension-filled issue for regulators, for the public, uh, and for those who are regulated. I also came away from the summit thinking that we really have no agreement yet on equity. And the equity issue kind of loomed up here and there during the uh, discussion that came out in McCain's comments about the 800,000 uh, Medicare beneficiaries in Florida who are going to not see their Medicare Advantage plans cut if the federal government does succeed in cutting the overpayments to MA plans. Uh, he was complaining that his own constituents in Arizona were not getting this kind of uh, perk, if you will, and that uh, he was raising the equity issue in a way, uh, but he was framing it not in terms of an equity issue, but in terms of the backroom deals that made this carve out for people in Florida. But I think we really still have no agreement on whether everyone in this country, every citizen, should have health care and the ticket to buy it. And I think the president was getting to that point at the very end when he admitted quite candidly he does not know whether we can bridge the gap. And the gap that he identified was how are we going to cover the 30 million people that the government wants to cover and deal with getting everyone into a risk pool, dealing with the pre-existing conditions issue, which keeps people out of this, uh, because in a private insurance market, you really, uh, the insurance companies can't really choose people who are sick or they will go out of business eventually. So that is really the question that has not been resolved. In her closing remarks Thursday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi reminded President Obama he once supported the public option. Mr. President, I hearken back to that meeting a year ago. At that time, uh, Senator Grassley said to, questioned you about the public option, and you said the public option is one way to keep the insurance companies honest and to increase, increase competition. If you have a better way, put it on the table. Well, I bring that up because we have come such a long way. We're talking about how close we are on this, how far apart we are here. But as a, 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 representatives of the, a representative of the House of Representatives, I want you to know that we were there that day in support of a public option which would save $120 billion, keep the insurance companies honest, and uh, increase competition. We've come a long way to agreeing to a Republican idea, the exchanges. Uh, Senator Enzi has uh, been a leader in that. Senator Snow, along with Senator Durbin, had uh, uh, legislation to that, of, uh, to that effect, a bipartisan, because the insurance companies opposed the public option. They couldn't take the competition. What about that, Trudy Lieberman? Why did President Obama drop the public option and what that means? It was never clear to me that he supported it in the first place, although if you go back to the campaign, his campaign boilerplate did say that he supported some kind of a public option. And I had reason to look at that fairly recently, and it was very clear that he did. But perhaps as the campaign went on and uh, campaign contributions came in from stakeholders, uh, not just insurance companies, but the doctors weren't keen on it, neither were the hospitals, certainly not the business community led by the Chamber of Commerce. So it was really a constellation of stakeholders who had contributed to his campaign that did not want the public option. And perhaps he soured on it along the way. On the advocacy 